when you've been using Power BI for a while, you'll probably run into this type of problem, uh, especially if you're working with schools. This is a graph of uh, the number of pupils in each year group, and it's the default graph that um, I've created by exporting data from Sims and putting it into Power BI. And you'll notice that the order of the year groups here is completely wrong because uh, Power BI has detected that the uh, data behind these columns is alphanumeric. It contains text as well as numbers. So it's put it into an alphanumeric order, which puts the numbers first and the text second, which is the wrong order for uh, most schools that we deal with. So there is a way of changing this. Uh, it's not particularly straightforward, but once it's done, it's done, and you don't have to redo it. So that's what this lecture is going to show you. The first thing we need to do is click on Edit Queries here and load up the Power Query Editor. Here's my Power Query Editor. It was on another screen, so I'll just bring it into this screen. So here's my Power Query Editor. Uh, and in here, you can see what the problem is, really. Uh, I'm trying to order columns based on the year taught in code, which is this column here. It's alphanumeric, it's got both numbers and text in there. So um, Power BI has spotted that basically it's going to uh, sort it uh, in, in an alphanumeric way. It's got the ABC there to indicate what type of column it is, which is fair enough, but it's not what we want. So what we do here is we're going to create uh, a new table. Now to create a new table, I can use this enter data button here. So I'm going to click the enter data button. And it comes up with this create table uh, box here. Um, and I can change the column header of the first column here. Uh, and this is going to be my year taught in code. And I can add another column here. And this is going to be a column called year index. Like that. So those are the column headers. And now I can specify what the individual lines of this table are going to be. It's only going to be a short table. It's not going to be a long one. Um, but the first column here is going to be um, N1, second one is N2, I'm just double clicking on the line underneath, and just make sure, make absolutely sure that whatever year taughting codes you put in here, they exactly match the year taughting codes that you've got in your main table. So I'm just going to go down to as far as year 6, there we go. And the year index here is any number I want, but obviously the sequence of the numbers should give me the order that I want the final graphs to be in. Now, I just use for convenience's sake, I start at minus 2, which looks a little odd at first, minus 1 for N2 and 0 for reception. But then it makes a lot of sense because you can do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 there. So it's just is a table of creating. It's only a small table. Let me give it a, a, a name. I'll call it year index. And click on OK. So that will, once it's finished doing this, that will create uh, a new table for me. Here it is. Here's my new table. Um, and uh, what I'll do next is I'll close and apply uh, this uh, Power Query Editor. So let's close and apply. And this will take us back into the Power BI desktop and apply these query changes. So we'll wait for this to finish. If I go to the Relationship tab now, where I had before just two tables in my very simple data model, I've now got a third table, Year Index. And Power BI has been very clever here because it's already created a, a, a relationship between my Pupil Data column and my Year Index column. I suspect it's done it because it's, it's found two columns that are called exactly the same thing. So it's found Year Torting Code there, and it's linked it with Year Torting Code there. The way to check, of course, is just to click on the line here, and then it highlights the two columns that it's using for its relationship. You'll see what it's done here. It's a, it, this is a one, there's the number one, to many relationship. So one line in your index it relates to many separate records in pupil data uh, table, which is what you'd expect. If it hadn't automatically de detected this relationship, I could have created it myself by dragging across year taughting code and dragging it across to year taughting code in this pupil data table. And that would have created the same link for us. But Power BI has automatically created that link. 
Okay, we're nearly there. I'm going to go to the data tab here, which shows the individual columns in our mark sheet. And I'm going to add an extra column in here, actually. I'm just going to take this column out. This is one I did while I was practicing. So I'm just going to take that column out. And I'm going to recreate this column because we're going to recreate that column now. And I'll show you how I do it. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to go to the modeling tab and click on new column. When we click on new column, it will open up the DAX. This is, a, the, this is the DAX formula bar, which is letting us uh, create a formula that creates the new column. Well, the first part of that column equals is creating the column header. So I'm going to call this year index equals. So my column will be called year index equals. And now I'm going to call on a DAX formula, a DAX expression called related. As I start typing in REL, it should get the idea of what I'm trying to do. And it's helping me out here. So it's, it's spotted the related command. I can press tab. And then it's helping me out again with the individual um, parameters to this formula. And what I want to do is I want to create a column that basically includes the year index, not the year sorting code that's already in this table. It's the year index that I want to add as a column to the end of this table. So again, I can use the IntelliSense uh, uh, feature there and just highlight it, press tab, or you could start typing it by hand if you wanted to. And I'll just finish this off by putting a closing brackets on the formula there. So now if I press this tick here to commit this formula, we should see some values appearing in that column. And there we go. We now have a pupil index column, which is based on the year taught in code. But unlike the year taught in code, there's the year taught in code there, Unlike the year taught in code, this is entirely numeric and it consists of those numbers that we specified in the table. So there we can see some pupils in N1 and N2. There we go. Nearly there. Last thing we need to do now to get this to actually work with all our um, visualizations is just to highlight the year taught in code as an entire column there and click on sort by column. When I initially saw sort by column, I thought sort by column would set the sort order for the entire table. No, it doesn't. This just works on a column and says that whenever we do use this column to sort, which column do we actually want to sort by? So as a default, as you can imagine, the year sorting code is used to sort by this column. But we can actually choose another column to sort by when this column is selected. And of course, we're going to choose our new year index. Uh, option down there. So I'll click on year index. Wait for that change to propagate. And that should be it. If I go back to my original graph now, now you can see already it's in the order we specified. Because whenever we use that column, that year sorting code column, it's automatically going to sort it by that new year index column. And that's it. Thank you.